What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, hit that like button, also hit that subscribe button. In this video, I'm gonna show you two things, how I do a leak down test, and then also um, how to lap valves to remedy a bad leak down test results. I got this Toro engine that I replaced recently and taken it apart, taking the opportunity to show you guys a few things. So let's get started now. I shot most of the footage yesterday for this video and this morning I just kind of wanted to speed up the process here of explaining what's going on. All right, so um, what a leak down test does is we apply pressure into the combustion chamber and it will let us know if we have a intake valve that's leaking and it'll be coming out of the intake or if you, um, like I have the intake off of this one so it'd be coming out from your air filter. You want to remove the air filter um, so you can feel that air coming out of your air intake if it is a bad intake valve if it's a bad exhaust valve You'll be able to feel it out of the end of the muffler And if you have bad rings or a worn cylinder wall worn piston rings or damaged cylinder wall You'll feel uh, air coming out of the like the dipstick So you'll want to remove all of that and then sometimes uh, so this is an air-cooled engine and sometimes I have felt air coming around the head gasket and if it's a liquid cooled engine, you'll see air bubbles develop in your radiator. So what the leak down test does, you remove the spark plug and you put in a hose and you're putting in a, um, pressure into the combustion chamber and then air is trying to escape one, somewhere. And just real quick, one of the first things I do when an engine's coming in, a mower's coming in and it's running poorly um, one, I check if it has good gas. I have make sure I have a good spark plug in there. And then what I also will do is take, while it's running, I'll take some carb cleaner and I'll spray all around the carburetor gaskets and intake manifold gaskets and everything else. And if it starts running differently when you hit a certain area, like for example, if, I were, if, I, if the intake was installed on this right now and we have a bad gasket here, as I'm spraying around and everything, it'll start running drastically different because I'll have a vacuum leak right there because of that missing gasket. So that's just the first three things I do. I just check that really quick because it's so um, it's fast and easy. Fresh gas, spark plug, and check for some vacuum leaks. Then after that, I go proceed with a leak down test. Now it's better to do a leak down test on a engine that is warm but unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to show you on this cold engine, but this was a perfect example. I wasn't sure what we were gonna find on this head, uh, but it turned out to be the perfect example to show you guys this, so let's get started. Oh, and I forgot, there's one other thing that I check before proceeding to the leak down test is I remove the valve cover. And just in case you guys um, didn't see that Toro video, that's exactly what happened with this engine. I removed the valve cover um, and I could see that the head was broken. We had, had to drop the valve in there. So that, and if these rocker arms are real loose, I mean, it's usually a common thing. Um, you know, people don't uh, get these valve clearances adjusted as they should. And oftentimes that will cause your uh, poor engine running conditions or just these rocker arms, the valve, clear, the valve lash clearances have, are just out of spec. But I've re I removed the valve cover and everything's looking good. Um, valve, uh, valve clearances are within spec. Then I proceed with the leak down test. All right, so we're going to do this leak down test. And first thing you want to do is get remove your spark plug. And, and you want to get that the cylinder that you're testing. We're only going to be able to test one cylinder at a time. You want to get it at top dead center. So get your that cylinder at top dead center, and that way there's no pressure on the um, the valves at all. Right now these rocker arms are nice and loose. I'm at top dead center. Um, oftentimes, you know, if, if you can do it without doing it at top dead center, you can have the piston all the way down like this one. I got it removed. Um, you can have the piston at the very bottom if you have completely removed the rocker arms, but it's probably be, probably better to do it at top dead center because um, that piston's all the way up and that's where you want to know that you have full compression. 
So if there's any wear, like on the cylinder walls or whatever, at the very top, during the compression stroke, that leak down test is gonna be more accurate then because that piston's gonna be all the way at the top. So if there's any uh, wear at the top of that cylinder wall, you'll be able to see it on that because if you, if you do it with the piston all the way down and the valves are just, the rocker arms are loose, but the, val the valves are closed uh, with the you know, tension of the springs, it might, do, it might be good, but you might have some bad cylinder uh, wall wear at the top of the cylinder. So what's critical when you get your cylinder back at top dead center, it's very critical that it's right at, in the middle. So um, that connecting rod is at the very top at like say 12 o'clock on that crankshaft because if you don't have it at top dead center and we all start applying that air pressure into the cylinder, it's gonna push the piston you know, either forward or reverse in rotation back down all the way. So it's very critical that you get it at dead center, right in the middle. All right, so right now let's look at the, um, first I'm gonna show you my kit here. I got this OTC cylinder leakage uh, tester kit, part number 5609. And it comes with several different fittings for different engines, you know, spark plug holes. And it comes with a hose, and then you get your uh, your valves here, your uh, regulator, your gauges here. So first, I'm going to screw in the hose into the spark plug hole, attach that hose to the gauges, and then next, attach your air compressor to the gauges. I already have it pressurized, and you'll want to make sure that knob is backed out, and then we're going to start applying pressure. So now I have 100 PSI and I have leakage somewhere, drastic leakage. So let's see where it's from. Actually, it's coming out a lot from the intake. So we have a leaking intake valve, leaking very badly. We also have a little bit of leakage out of the exhaust. Now, um, if you were to take the dipstick, you're supposed to have the dipstick already off, but I didn't obviously. So if you feel air pressure coming out of here, that's a sign that you got worn cylinder rings or a worn cylinder wall. And I'm feeling just a little bit out of there. So I backed off the air pressure and I decided to go ahead and remove the head. But first I'm going to remove these rocker arms. And this is going to allow the uh, valve springs to apply all the pressure to those valves against the head and I'm going to do just for fun I'm going to do another leak down test to see if anything has changed yeah we got a lot this engine had to be running really bad it was running really bad when he broke the freaking cylinder head so we have significant we're at like 58% so I mean we have like 42% leakage. So just real quick, no engine cylinder is going to, you know, um, have zero leakage. It's all going to leak a little bit, but the percentage is, you know, five to 10% is probably okay. Anything over 10%, to especially 15%, uh, you're probably going to need to do some repairs. So guys, as I was removing these head bolts, I uh, ran into another situation that on this uh, bottom bolt here right next to the exhaust valve it was really really tight and it's going to provide some future video material for you but basically the threads came out with the, the bolt. Head is kind of corroded more. And I'll have more on oh this later. Gosh. If you were to so so basically we have here's our um, intake valve, which is normally bigger, exhaust valve is going to usually be smaller. So, so basically, what's going on is all this carbon buildup has gotten into where the car, the the valve seats, and it's not letting it uh, seat and seal properly. This is going to be the perfect example to show you guys how to how to fix this issue. 
And here's a real quick look at the bolts that gave the problem. You can see all that aluminum still on the thread. And there's the non-existent threads anymore. But I'll make another video on this. But I'm going to go ahead and fix that bolt where I can bolt it down and do the proper leak down test on it. Even though I'm going to be re reusing this uh, head gasket. And guys, I'm reusing the head gasket because this engine is no longer ever going to run again. Um, it's already damaged and this is I'm just doing this for this video to show how to do a leak down test. So guys, yesterday I shot this footage uh, showing you how to remove this little uh, valve spring retainers. I'm using a uh, valve spring compressor tool right here, but I'm going to show you a real quick uh, a trick that I do often because it's so much faster sometimes than using one of these valve spring uh, compression tools. Okay, so one thing that I'll do often if I don't feel like uh, breaking out that tool is I will find something that I can put underneath here to keep the where I can lay the head down on a flat surface, but I'm taking, I'm filling up this uh, this void, that filling up the depth here, that the top of the um, cylinder head here, and that way I can just place this down on the ground, and just be careful not to mess up, you know, scratch up your surface or where you're going to be putting the new head gasket. So I'm going to put that nice and flat there on the ground where. Now I can't move those valves down because without it I can push the valve I can push the valve down. Oh. And the next thing I'll do now that I can't push the valve down is I'll take a washer and I will push down on this. I'm gonna get the camera so you guys can see up closer what I'm doing here. Also grab a magnet. Let's see if you guys can see this. So as I push down on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab those little retainers out of there with my magnet. Like that. So these are tapered little pieces and there's a little edge there and it kind of just goes like that. So to put it back on, what I do, I go ahead and just slip these into this little collar here. Of course the police gotta come and arrest somebody. Now, putting it back on is a lot harder. So I'm gonna take the, um, what I do is I put the spring back, put this piece on here, and then put these pieces inside of there. My washer. And I'm hoping that these are just kind of fall into place so one has caught but this one hasn't so I just kind of use the edge of that washer as I was pushing down to kind of moving on over there so now let's go back to where i was cleaning up the head i just used a little plastic brush on a drill and now let's uh work on these valves all right so i went ahead and just kind of cleaned up the valves with my uh, bench grinder wire brush on the bench bench grinder now i'm going to show you how to make them seal properly so what you want to do is first take some uh, valve grinding compound all right we're going to put it on the oh it's a lot don't need that much i'm just showing you how i do it all right so now i've put it back in and i need to spin that around 
and that compound is going to grind both the cylinder head and the valve to a nice smooth finish. Now this is what I do. I get a little drill. and spin it, you know, relatively at a medium speed. You'll hear, you'll hear it cutting in and then you'll hear it smooth out and then I just kind of pop it open, let some fresh compound get in there. You'll feel it smooth out, open it up. You'll feel it very abrasive and smooth out. And I'll just repeat that process several times. Then do the other valve the same way. Wipe it very clean once you're done. And then you can reassemble it just like I showed you before. There I would recommend you put new valve seals on if you're doing this. And then obviously in your situation, you would want to put a new head gasket on. All right guys, so I got the cylinder head back on. Um, I don't even have the head bolt down in here with the messed up threads, but I went ahead and just kind of ugga dugga I didn't, you know, torque it down to any specs. I just tightened the head down. But basically, I just want to show how lapping those valves will help out a lot. So let's go ahead and crank this up. I got the head back on there. Um... So we're going to go up to 100 PSI and again you want to stay within 10 PSI so we're at 100 and you can see we're at uh, 2, 4, 6, 96 so we only have 4% leakage now. Now that we've lapped those valves a lot less air, I don't even feel any air come out here. Maybe, uh, it's probably this exhaust valve. I feel just a little bit. I still feel a little bit, you know, we didn't correct that. So we probably got, I would say, 2% out of here. Worn rings. But it would run far, far better now. Now that these uh, valves are left. So what I'm about to do right now is I'm going to tap these valves and all that pressure in that combustion chamber is going to let air blow past those valve seats and any little contamination left over will be blown out. Now we're even doing even better. Now we're at like 98%. That's really good results considering I have one head bolt missing and I reuse the head gasket. Alright guys, I hope this video helps you out and just to um, Say again, this engine, I did a lot of things on this one that I skipped a lot of steps. Like you definitely would want to replace your valve seals, uh, carefully clean uh, the, both surfaces, all the block and the head, and install a new head gasket. And you also would want to tighten them down in a sequence, torque them down to the proper torque required for your engine. I didn't do all that. This video is basically just to show you how you can remedy uh, a bad leak down test. We had bad, uh, we had those valves leaking down. Uh, this engine, the block's already damaged on the other side, so that's why I went ahead and just did it the way I did, just to make this video a lot quicker. So do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll have more videos like this coming soon, guys. Thanks for watching.